Okay, so today we're going to talk about ancient Sumeria, which many people call our first civilization, which we know is a loaded word, and we're not sure they're first, but uh, it's a good place to start. Okay, so ancient Sumeria, which I'll explain where that comes from, is a civilization that grew up next to a couple of rivers known as Mesopotamia, or the land between two rivers, or the rivers. Now, the two main rivers here we have are the Euphrates, which is down here, and the Tigris, and plus you get a few other rivers as well. Lots of rivers, no rain, we'll talk about that. Um, but some of the world's oldest settlements are here, um, and we refer to these people as a civilization because they have writing, big victories, similar language, similar religious beliefs, things along that line. And here's a picture of the Tigris today. As you see, normally you think Middle East, all deserts, no. And then here is the Euphrates. Okay, but there is one bit of an issue, and we're going to talk about it uh, again because it's going to result in some uh, really unique uh, advancements, if you will. Um, it doesn't really rain here, really, ever. The rain comes in Turkey. If I pop back up, okay, so modern Turkey is up here by the Meso in Mesopotamia. And this is where the rain comes, and then you know the, you get the flood from mountain ice and whatnot, and then that eventually comes down. But this area itself doesn't really rain, which does make it tough. But the soil is good enough that they can grow lots of grain. And this, uh, as a result, we get a group of people known as the Sumerians on the right. That could be some of them or some of their gods. Um, obviously, we got some beards, we got some crazy one-eyed guy here. But um, now we call them the Sumerians because the oldest of the cities that we found and we have references to is the city of Sumer, uh, hence the Sumerians. Um, what we or why they're important is of their language is actually pretty crucial. They are a Semitic group of people, and later on, other folks known as the uh, Akkadians, the Hebrews, which you might have heard of, uh, as well as the Phoenicians, um, and other languages like Hebrew, Northern African dialects, as well as Arabic, all come from this group of people. So, whereas the Sumerians themselves aren't necessarily around, um, their descendants most certainly are, again, most notably being the Arabs and the Hebrews. Now, they were, or their cities, which we talked about the creation of cities, these cities are going to be much larger, and they are going to run a type of government that we will see in other places in the world known as the city-state. The idea of the city-state is that you try to control as much land around the city as possible. And thus, you then have a government which is led by a lugal, or we call him a king. Uh, it's loosely translated as big man. And he is the guy that gives the general orders. The priests are also going to be important because they speak to the gods, which I'll talk about in a moment. And technically, the high priest was actually considered to be a little bit higher than the king. And everything was dictatorial. And we don't mean dictatorial necessarily in a bad way, because today when you hear dictator, it's always bad. Dictator is the idea that just one person calls the shot and they dictate the law. And that's exactly what we have here in the city-state structure. And then you have everybody else below, and we'll talk about the social structure as it is. Now, the social classes, you know, as we see them kind of structured here, and you have a little, uh, little pyramid on the right, so we have our king and the priest up top, okay, and then the high priest and other nobles, so they're going to be up top, and the nobles are the, the king's family, okay? Below here, you have officials, scribes, and minors, priests. Like, these are, officials are the guys that, you know, run the different departments, and basically their main job is to collect taxes, which is kind of important, which you'll learn more about in empires. Um, and scribes are really crucial. Now, the reason why scribes are, cru are crucial, one, we're going to talk about writing, but it's actually a form of social mobility. If you can learn how to read and write, you can get yourself out of a job, and you can go from nothing to a pretty good spot. Everybody else is considered to be a craftsman. You have farmers, herders, builders, stuff like that. And then you have serv servants and laborers. Now, a peasant doesn't own land. They work for someone who owns land. 
Um, men definitely had more rights than women, although women definitely have some rights here. And one of the reasons we know that, that priestesses were considered to be pretty high. And as a result of that, um, women did have a, a, a bit of an influence here. Uh, also, and we'll talk about this more, um, many goddesses were important. And in certain cultures, like for instance, in Greece, you do have goddesses, but the female goddesses are very stereotypical and doesn't really say much about women. Whereas in Sumeria, it's going to be very different. Now, here are some of their cities, and you can see how impressive they would have looked through, you know, us rebuilding. This is the, uh, something called the Ziggurat, which I'll talk about in a little while. So this is the city of Ur. This is one of the great cities on this large plain. Um, thousands of people lived here. You had some streets. This is a palace and religious complex. Very, very important. And this is a pretty one. This is Eridu. Eridu would have been right on the Persian Gulf. You can see a canal that leads right up to it. Um, we've got these incredibly huge buildings. We actually have a lot of writing about Eridu, so we kind of have a good idea what it would have looked like. Now on the right there, no, that's not an alien. I want to draw your attention to, oh, it's a Venus figurine back and better than ever. So something go is going on and we see these figurines here and the importance of women as well so it's pretty old and some really great achievements here's a bowl with writing we'll talk about that but here you see a uh, a regular arch and this is called up here a corbel arch okay but arches were first used in sumeria so you could get wider hallways and cover greater spans so a big architectural thing Religion was huge. Religion was the center of these people's lives. It wasn't really nice, not like in the sacrifice, cut out your heart kind of way. Now, one of the reasons why we know religion is so crucial is that the biggest building in every single city of the Sumerians was a ziggurat. In front of you here, this giant structure, that is a ziggurat. That's actually the ziggurat of Ur. And you can see it's absolutely huge. It's built with all of these... Um, bricks. Once again, we talked about this before, if you can build huge structures, that means you have a good government, and you have um, good organization, and so religion was important. Now, we do have a lot of religious writings. Uh, one of the most mo notable, I'll jump to it down here, is the Epic of Gilgamesh, and we'll be reading some of this. Uh, as you see here, here's Gilgamesh over there with, like, holding up lions by their tails, so he was kind of awesome. But... They believed they were polytheistic. They believed in many gods, and unfortunately those gods were not very nice. That those gods were basically here to test you, and they were fairly spiteful and mean, and would send storms and droughts and hurt you, and so you prayed to them with the hopes that they wouldn't hurt you. Um, yeah, like, not, not real nice. Um, now... The afterlife, and this gives us an idea of how rough regular life was, uh, it was the belief that when you died, your spirit, so they did kind of believe in a soul, uh, went to a plane of dust and darkness. So like you're like sneezing and coughing for all of eternity surrounded by darkness. It's awful. I mean, it's just terrible. I can't, I can't even imagine that. But this, this gives you a little bit of an inkling of what their day-to-day -day life was because if they believed the afterlife was that bad, how rough was regular life? And it had to have been rough. Not that there wasn't joy and happiness, but normally most cultures have some type of up, down, good, bad, whatever, and this is just pretty awful. Now, I bring up women's rights. The most important god for all of them was Ishtar, and Ishtar was a woman. Now, this is crucial. The fact that a high goddess is the highest one and her priestesses are very important, that is a big, big deal, okay? That doesn't normally happen, so it gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. And then the priests, of course, were incredibly powerful. If they told you to do something, this is how it would be done. Now, there's no evidence of human sacrifice or anything, so that's like a bonus. But to give you an idea, like, uh, for instance, certain kings uh, each and every year had to be uh, slapped by a priest to prove their worth. And if the king didn't cry from the slap, he was considered to be unworthy and they would like kill him. It was pretty dynamic, but it gives you an idea of the importance of religion. And we're going to continue to talk about religion's a big, big theme. 
But the most important thing, hands down, is writing. As of right now, this is the oldest writing in the world. It is known as cuneum form, which means wedge writing. And what they would use a little stylus to make these wedges and dots, you see here, okay, in these little pictures, uh, as writing. Now, most of the writing was fairly uh, kind of boring, if you will. It was record creeping, uh, record keeping, grain, other transactions, trade, and taxes. But here's the thing. You need that stuff to function. You need to know how much grain they have. You need to know um, transactions between merchants, um, religious texts as well, the Epic of Gilgamesh. And this is absolutely huge. And they use pictograms. Okay, and you see here's a little chart and how um, it would eventually go into English. Okay, so... Uh, this is your first one, an actual bull's head. Then it gets a little more complicated, and eventually it will move to writing similar to ours. But this is huge, okay? We spread knowledge through writing and text and sharing stories. There's only so much that you can hope that people can memorize, but even in memorization, something gets lost. To write it down, and that is the key hallmark of a civilization that typical historians use is writing. Writing is what takes you to the next level, and these guys were most undoubtedly next level. And I can't, I mean, you know the importance of writing. One of the biggest changes for the history of mankind. Now, we also get a lot of other cool stuff from them. It was the Sumerians that we believe really advanced bronze. Um, also expand that pottery and textile industry um, in having you actually had certain people that were distributors of these massive goods. And in the end, as you'll see, especially when I talk about empires in the next video, it's all about the money. Uh, the wheel score, not only like the regular wheel, but also the spoked wheel, which one looks cooler and two is more powerful. Uh, they also invent the lateen sail. Now, a lateen sail is very, very important. That is a triangular sail. And not that you guys are sailors, but just understand that the lateen sail allows you to, quote, unquote, catch the wind a lot better. And they were also very good at astronomy and mathematics. Um, the number 60 is very, very important. Um, they use 60 as their base number in mathematics. Um, they were used it to develop practical geometry, as and what I mean that using geometry to build stuff, not complex ge geometry like theorems and stuff, but they could track um, astronomical movements, and it's through the use of 60 and numbers that go into 60 that we get our 12-month year, our 60-minute hour, our 60-second minute, and the idea of 360 degrees in a circle. So those things were all very, very important. We also get from the Semitic people and the Sumerians iron. Now the specific group are the Hittites, and the Hittites aren't quite Sumerian. They kind of come in from the outside. We're going to talk about it later, but it is in this area that they invent iron. Iron is of incredible importance. Um... <laughs> It's hard to underestimate it. It's harder and stronger and more durable than bronze. It eventually would give us steel. And iron is really hard to work. And so a lot of guys that were um, smiths that used and could make iron things were often seen as like semi-divine, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so... This would be devastating, particularly in warfare. The Hittites, there's a picture on the right if you notice them, like, oh, hey, a chariot and a horse, and they have iron weapons, and oh, there's a man there. Yeah, it's not going to work out, but this is the next step, and we're going to talk about iron a lot more later. Now, we all do kind of need to eat, and these guys, of course, were the successors to the Natufians, um... All of this agricultural is very important because remember, if you can't eat, you can't do anything else, okay? Uh, their trade is based off it. They do trade primarily in agricultural goods. 
So this stuff is crucial. Uh, we have some of the world's first irrigation projects. Remember, it doesn't rain, so they need, need to irrigate. Also, they build some canals as well and reservoirs to hold what rain they had. When well, probably one of their biggest inventions, as you see the arrow pointing to, is the plow. With the plow, you can break up soil easily. Therefore, you can plant more um, seeds and plant a larger area than by digging it up yourself. And by doing that, you have more grain, you have more grain, people can do more stuff, they have more food, and life is good. But it all wasn't really good. Um, there are some issues here. One, there are no natural boundaries. There aren't a lot of mountains to kind of protect them. And the city-states in general um, actually went to war a lot. And that's why we see lots of city walls. And this is how you know someone is under threat or there has been a war. You don't build a wall to keep people in. You build a wall to keep people out. Um, the land is also very flat, which again allows invasion, the irregular water that I talked about, okay? And again, the responses to these were building of um, irrigation as well as the walls. But then the final issue you have is disease, and disease is definitely problematic. You get a bunch of people and animals in an area, and you get sick, and at a fairly fast clip and you know we'll talk about that and the impact of disease and the problems of cities and stuff like that and we've talked about it a little bit on the blog already so it's pretty pretty impactful and the last group and this is the last thing to talk about because this is a huge theme are nomads oh nomads they are traveling they are hunter gatherers and they need stuff and they are also struggling to survive. Now, there are some good impacts of nomads. The good is that sometimes they're pretty good at trading stuff. Okay, they can travel and take your stuff to somebody else's stuff and exchange it for goods, and that's pretty cool. The bad stuff is that they tend to be better fighters than you, and you die. We're going to talk about nomads over and over again. They bring down cultures. They can destroy everything. However, they also can create things. They are a really interesting group, and nomadic groups would kind of hit and run all over the place, and sometimes they would stay. Like, they'll start by conquering, and then they'll start messing people up. Uh, this, of course, the main group that John Green will be talking about being the Mongols. But here we have a fully flowered civilization. We have technology. We have tools. We have writing. And we know so much about them, or we think we know, because, of course, they're writing, and it's biased. But you got to be ready for it. All right, so I will see you guys in class tomorrow. Make sure you check the calendar so you know what to do.